this story was sent to me by my friend Mark Viola. I was kind of waiting for something like this to happen, actually. Um, it's a story about India, and I was concerned about India throughout this whole pandemic situation. And, and Mark and I had a conversation, and I remembered they do have a version of... Uh, a, a version of Medicare for all in India. Uh, Prime Minister Modi does have that, but but it's executed in the same fashion as the Affordable Care Act. Um, you know, so it's like you have to go sign up for it. So it's kind of like Medicare for all. The principles are like Medicare for all, but it's not Medicare for all. A little bit complicated. Uh, but uh, India is not hit as hard right now by it. Uh, but they are taking early precautionary measures, right? Um, they're locking everything down. They're going into quarantine. And I think the next step, if they do it right, should be converting some uh, facilities into testing and treatment centers specifically for COVID-19, very similarly to what we saw uh, in the uh, in the Pacific South, Southwest. Uh, is that Southwest? Like the Korea, Vietnam, China area. Uh, Japan, all the all those countries. Is that Pacific South Southwest? Somebody comment if that's what it is. I, I'm I'm getting my geography wrong here, but anyway, um, so they went on lockdown, and what ended up happening with that is they put a transform transportation lockdown as well. They told everybody to stay inside, and and they basically shut down all the transportation um, around as well, and uh, that caused a bunch of migrant workers. These are people that come in from villages to the big cities to work at jobs, and they they'll usually live in the cities. You know, they'll kind of either live in these shanty towns or they'll live in a very cheap little uh, apartment space or cohabitation space or what whatever. Um, and they and they'll work, and then they'll send money back to their to their family so that their their family can you know to live um that's that's one of the ways that that the, that these people work so a lot of the business there is done by uh cash by the way right it's like a cash industry um so all these migrant workers that are in these big cities that are ordered to go back to their homes uh are left without transportation they can't go back to their villages so what do they do they start walking they, they're, they're, and they're walking like 50 to 300 miles. That's how far away some of these people are, 300 miles. They have to walk 300 miles. And the crazy part is <laughs> the Modi government was basically like, oh, we didn't realize the, the scope of the exodus that was going to happen when we like announced this lockdown uh, that everybody needs to be inside. Like we didn't realize the scope of which this thing that we're asking people to do like we didn't realize that it was going to be this fucking crazy like we didn't get that part uh which to me is just like but but how but how did you not know that like how did you not have you never met people like when you kind of hurt like there's also a one point what 1.3 billion people in india right now <laughs> like you don't think like a like a lockdown order isn't gonna panic all these people like what the what but this is no different than how the United States reacted um, when they put their cor their their quarantine uh, you know orders in effect. Um, very similar to the United States Congress, they were just like, "Oh, we didn't realize that we were gonna sh kind of shut down the economy because we just figured that the economy was uh, run by uh, magic pixies." that uh that rich people um in, uh made with um with stock exchanges that's so when you make the exchange these pixies are born and uh and they kind of run the gears of the economy uh we didn't realize that uh it it's it's actually uh, determined on 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 middle class people and we just kept bailing out the banks but we didn't realize that nobody believed in the banks because because the banks aren't really doing anything and people are out of work and can't invest in the banks. So whoopsie like that's <laughs> which really to me shows how out of touch these fucking politicians are, right? Like how out of touch these people are to be like, Oh, we didn't realize like all of these jobs would be affected by it. We also didn't realize how these other jobs that are essential are going to be affected when we say quarantine and global pandemic and all these other words that sound very, very scary, like 
it just shows them that they're not in touch with with what everyday people go through and they want to represent everyday people like how are you going to represent an everyday person when you don't know what an everyday person has to go through so if they would have done these lockdown procedures properly um, I think what they would have done is provide, trans like, make sure that there's some kind of transport for them and make sure that if you can't afford the transportation, uh, that some somebody or something is going to take care of you, right? Like, to, to, to have some sort of provisionary budget within allocated within the transportation department um, to get these people home so that they can be with their families in lockdown, right? Now, right now in India... Um, and like I said, these numbers are, are probably uh, going to change. Uh, there's only 1,000 reported COVID-19 cases and 27 deaths. Um, in a country of 1.3 billion, that is a, to me, that, that sounds like a fucking miracle. Um, with what's going on in New York <laughs> and, and India being far more densely populated than New York, it's way more dense, uh, densely populated than New York. Um, that just either means that, uh, uh, Indian people have superior genetics. They were just, you know, far more resilient, uh, to, to these viruses, um, or uh, were cleaner than New York. And, but in either case, it's just, it just kind of shows like a lack of, uh, Lack of proper execution in terms of America's part of letting this disease spread. Because I, I think India is sort of in the earlier stages is is my understanding of it. I might be wrong about it, but they but they seem to be in the earlier stages of it. So they're immediately locking shit down um, to try to try to do the quarantine social distancing thing. Now, the concern I have with this is that I feel like these numbers are going to go up, not because of um, the virus, but because of starvation and exhaustion from migrant workers literally having to walk back to their homes. 50 to 300 miles. And there are people that are, that are trying to do that, right? That right, right now they don't have money for food. They don't have water. They're exhausted, but they got to get home because there's this order in place. Um, there's this lockdown order in place. And a lot of them are like smoking, to curb their appetite and uh we're dealing with an upper respiratory disease which means that smokers are more are, are more likely to be susceptible to this thing or like if it hits them it'll hit them a little bit harder than a non-smoker would at that time and you also have a, a group of people that are exhausted that are starving that are stressed out which which also means that they're so essentially by creating a lockdown order and not executing it properly, you created a bunch of fucking immunocompromised people. You've just made that happen. You just made people that are far more susceptible and far more likely to get this virus that aren't going to uh, that aren't going to be able to fight it off as as well as as anybody else would. So that I think is going to create more deaths than the virus itself. And this is, this is a problem that I think Modi has had for, for quite some time, is that he comes up with these ideas, right? Like the lockdown order, hitting that lockdown early, getting that quarantine in place early, getting that stay-at-home order in place as early as possible um, is essential, is essential in, in um, you know, in all this, in, in, a, in, a, in this situation. Uh, we should have caught it a month early when there was... Uh, reports of this virus spreading. That's what we should have done, right? Um, and going into the whole shoulda, coulda, woulda is at this point, uh, I don't know how much productivity that's really going to get, how, how much we're going to really move ahead, move forward uh, in, in really taking care of this um, situation. Uh, you know, that's why yesterday I said we should be correcting the curve. That's the point of that. We should be looking ahead to, to say, okay, we fucked up. We made some mistakes. How do we fix it? How do we get to a point where we can actually reignite the economy and get the middle class taken care of? Um, and that's not, really, that's not really happening either. 
the situation's kind of getting worse. So, so with India, it seems like they took care of this. This was an early measure that they took, and they took care of it, uh, and, and that's why they're doing this lockdown order. But the problem with Modi is he has these ideas, he gets up on the right track, and then he does a real shit job of executing it. You know, like he wanted to, one of the, one of the best examples of that is he wanted to take care of um, organized crime. And organized crime being a cash-based economy, he was like, oh, I'll curtail the cash. That's what I'll do. I'll, um, I'll curtail the cash. And so he took out 500 and 1,000 rupee notes uh, out of circulation. And he basically said, if you have those notes, you basically have this amount of time to get it into a bank. And India is a primarily cash-based economy. So not a lot of people, I mean, you know, not everybody has a bank account. Poor people don't really have a bank account in India. That's not something that they need, especially if everything runs on cash anyway. So again, it's one of those things where poor people kind of look at like the stock market of any kind of thing, like playing the, playing the market, buying stocks and all that stuff. They're like, fucking why? Why would I put my money into this thing that's going to grind it up and somehow magically maybe spit out more money? I don't know. That sounds like gambling. I don't have any time for that. I got to fucking buy food for my kids. You know, like they just kind of look at it that way. So they weren't, they, people weren't able to get to a bank and lost a shit ton of money because he did this. And then organized crime was able to get their money and launder it through the banking system. So it, like it, it kind of failed. Like I understand what he was trying to do. It's just he didn't execute it properly. And this is sort of the same thing. He, he ordered this lockdown and he put this time frame on it and everybody fucking freaked out where it should have been like, hey, we're going to take a week to get everybody home. We're going to take care of the migrant workers that are in the cities. Um, so if everybody within the city, if you live in the city, if that's, if the, you know, that's where your family is and stuff, if you guys could go ahead and stay quarantined and only go out for essential things like groceries and things of that, things of that nature, um, we're going to try to organize to try to get these people back to their villages. Um, and, and come up with a plan and a system and, you know, like take care of hundreds and thousands of people. Uh, but he didn't do that. Um, really the task is, and, and, and this is a pretty big, and what I'm asking is, is a pretty big task. I, I completely understand that, but that's what the infrastructure I think should have been rerouted to. And you still have the opportunity to, I think, do that in, in some respects. Uh, there needs to be uh, another provision put into place to help the displaced and the homeless. Um, India has a lot of shanty towns as well. And, uh, and those folks, I mean, you know, an infection like this could run really rampant there, um, which then could erupt and become worse. So you kind of have to figure out how to keep, protect these folks as well in order to protect the larger populace in general. And, and, and just because you, you also should right like you should value their life as much as you value mine or, or yours um, they did announce that they were putting 22 billion dollars 22 billion dollars not rupees dollars into a relief package uh, focused on people that were displaced by the virus so so basically a, a 22 billion dollar economic stimulus to help the working class people of India that's the plan right now um, and the main thing I think that, that they still need to do, and, and that's, that's a good thing. And they're, again, they're doing it, they're doing it a lot faster if, if they are kind of in the earlier stages of this thing. Um, if they're a couple weeks behind us, uh, there has to be a plan that's put into place for more vulnerable people in the community. There has to be. You can't have people that are homeless and displaced. You can't have these migrant workers that are all based in a cash society and not take care of them and just say, we're in a lockdown. And if you don't go home, we're going to fine you or we're going to put you in prison or whatever. That, that's, that's not a way to, um, that's, that's, not a, that's not a way to lead. That's not a solution to this. So, you know, uh, I'm, I'm hoping for the, I'm hoping that these people get home safe in some capacity, that that the Modi government comes up with some kind of a plan to take care of these migrant workers. Um, I hope that this $22 billion economic stimulus that is going to come out um, does take these people into account. 
that that poor people are taken into account in India. So we'll see. I I'm 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 hoping that this this bit of bad news will get turned around uh and and we'll see some we'll see some action. We'll see some real real planning uh going forward. So Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and a subscribe and a share. Share it out with your friends, your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy content like this. I'm going to be putting out videos like this every single day. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel uh, and make sure you hit that bell so you get all the alerts from all the videos that I put out there. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you have the means to, uh, please consider making a, a donation. I know we are all in tough times, but if you, if you can, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can check out various different ways of becoming a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also check out all of my past comedy albums, which are available on all of your favorite streaming and uh, downloading websites, if that's that's if that's a way that you can you say that, uh, <laughs> but they're also available on Bandcamp, which uh, right now is giving the most back to artists. Uh, but also on my Bandcamp, they are all available for a pay what you want. If you would like to enjoy some live stand-up comedy albums from me, and you don't have the means if you're in tough times that's totally fine you can download it for free go ahead and get it for free and enjoy it uh or if you do and if you want somebody else to enjoy it you can get it to them as a gift uh that's also a a recommended thing uh but most importantly thank you guys for tuning into this video um thank you guys for for all the people that have already donated that have already become patrons i really appreciate it you guys are amazing and uh until the next video We'll see you on the road. Thank you, guys.